Last Farm Settlement comprises five roundhouses built on stilts and surrounded by a palisade. It's built over a watercourse, but the thing about that watercourse is that it's not a, a river in the sense of full flow and things, it's a stagnant, almost sort of linear body of water. And in terms of our understanding of the, the story of the settlement, when it collapses into that, that body of water, it's not being washed away. So we've got the sort of stagnant environment that allows everything to be preserved in situ. The Must Farm settlement lasted about one year, and the evidence for this is, comes from a range of things, including the freshness of the wood at the time the settlement burnt down, the absence of wood borers, um, and also just the, the, the narrowness of the stratigraphy. We've got 15 centimetres of deposit just for our settlement. The best thing about Must Farm is that not only do we have the architecture, but we have all the things that were inside those buildings. So at the point when the settlement burnt down, they were fully equipped. So we have to imagine that basically everything you ever wanted to have in your house above a, above a watercourse in the late Bronze Age was inside those structures. The settlement was ended by the fire. And the burning of the architecture meant that the heavy roofs basically collapsed onto the floors, a bit like a coffee plunger, and took all of the contents of each of the structures down to the bottom of the riverbed. And we're pretty confident that, because that was the dynamic, that the, most of the material culture, most of the objects that we excavated, the pots, the metalwork, the, the bobbins and the loom weights and things, are in a position that's pretty much relative to where they were on the floors of the structures. The axe is as much a symbol of our prehistoric past as it was a tool that was important to people thousands of years ago. It was bronze axes that were used to fell trees and dress timber to construct the pile dwellings of the Must Farm settlement. But their presence in the burned remains suggests their owners left in a hurry. Thousands of bronze axe heads have been found across the UK usually as isolated finds, but sometimes as large groups or hordes. Rarely are they found in their wooden handle. So there were nine axe halves altogether. Um, the majority were made of oak or ash, but the most complete one, the two-piece axe half that was found underneath structure one, was made of field maple and oak. The nine wooden objects found at Must Farm represent complete or parts of axe handles and three were found with a bronze blade. As an almost complete artefact, archaeologists can better understand its object biography. The wooden handles are preserved well enough to see the tooling marks created when the handles were shaped using different types of tools such as other axes and chisels. All of the structures had axes and there were different types but there was a sort of relatively sort of even distribution of those types across the, the different structures and these were used mostly for the, the sort of primary workings of the architecture. The axe heads must have been cast elsewhere but it's possible the rough cast was finished at Must Farm and their owners certainly maintained and sharpened them as grinding marks can still be seen on the blade edge. The axes have loops on them, which are generally interpreted to help tie the head back to stop it flying off the handle. So the two-piece axe half found beneath structure one, when we excavated it, we could see this sort of trace of what looked like a piece of cordage or something like that, going across the actual axe and onto the handle. But there's some ambiguity whether it's just some sort of preservation of a root cast or something like that. But it could be good evidence that they were actually being tied on. One of the complete axes was exceptionally well preserved and is different from the other axes in that its field maple and oak haft was made in two parts that fit together. Axe handles are rare, but two part handles are even rarer they would have taken far more time to shape and fit than a natural elbow branch. It's been speculated that two-part handles would have been inferior to solid elbow hafts, but this would need to be put to the test. It's possible a two-part handle was made because finding a natural elbow branch of the right thickness and shape takes as much time as it does to make a two-part version.